I'm Sudarshan Koirala and welcome back to Data Science Basics. This is the fifth video in the Databricks free edition series. If you are not aware, these are the videos that I have already been created. So this is the first one about the Databricks free edition, what it is all about. And then we went through the Databricks UI part, how to create the compute and the notebook creation. The last one was about the DVFS, why there is no DVFS in Databricks free edition and how to upload the data into the Databricks UI, right? Once that is done, what I want to cover now in this video, let me make this bigger, is into this SQL part. And inside the SQL also, I will be covering SQL editor, queries and the query history. It seems simple to go through these three different things, but it's good if you know how to navigate into these things. It will help you to get into the Databricks learning path smoothly. Let me go into the first one, this SQL editor, right? If I go inside the SQL editor, you can see where you can write the SQL queries. You can see here it's a select option or browser. You can do all sorts of things by clicking this. But the easiest thing here is if you go here, there is this catalog. There is this past executions and there is this assistant. Assistant, I will come back to this in the next video. But before going into the assistant part, I want to show you the catalog things. If you are familiar with DVFS, then this is quite different. I have covered this in my previous video also, but it's quite easy to navigate through the data you have in the Databricks part. This is Titanic data set. If I go inside this, there is Titanic. And if I go inside this, you will see all the columns. To reiterate, which I mentioned in my last video, in Unity catalog, there is this three hierarchy. The catalog. Inside the workspace, we have the Titanic data set, which is the schema, right? And then this is the table. This three level hierarchy is mentioned here. Instead of going here and writing the queries, the easiest way is with these three dots, you can say preview in new tab. If you just click this one, then this is here. Select all from workspace, Titanic data sets, Titanic limit 100. That is already being provided here. The three level hierarchy. This is the catalog. This is the schema and this is the table. And now we have the output here, right? Let me make this bigger. There should be a SQL starter warehouse or SQL warehouse which is already being provided for us from databricks it is automatically triggered when you run this or you can go into sql warehouses and then start the warehouse one additional thing is you can see here we have select all from workspace titanic data sets and titanic right if you are already in the right where we have the catalog here we have this schema already. If you click on this drop down, you can see all the different tables in that particular schema. If we already have this selected, just to show you an example, if I go here and go into the default and if I run this again, it will still run because we have this three level hierarchy. What we can do is if I go into the Titanic data set, then we don't need this three level hierarchy. It's better for understanding where it is coming from if you are just looking into the SQL query. But you can go here and provide Titanic because that is the table we have. And if I run this again, it will run because we already have this catalog and schema. If you go into these three dots here, you can see there are different options, right? Edit query, info, reward the changes, add to dashboard, create a lot disable the autocomplete and so on based on what you need. There is also this format the query. This is really helpful when you write complex SQL queries. You want to format that properly. If you click on this one, you can see there is select all from Titanic limit holder. So it's kind of formatted in this way. If you want to format the query, there is the option for that. So yeah, this is what it is. It is here. And now there is the option to save this query. Why this is important is maybe let's say this is a simple SQL statement. You can just do select all from this, right? But assume that you have many tables and you were doing SQL scripts and you want to use that in the future. You can save this um, SQL script. 
you can go here and there is this save icon you can save this and it will be asked where you want to save here i'm saying you workspace users and inside my i can just say here titanic data says preview or you can just say here titanic data set exploration something like this and you can save this one this is saved and next one is also good to know many things here in the ui itself there is this schedule so you can schedule when to run this sql script you can say here add schedule and it will be showing you all sorts of things where you can schedule this one and the next one is also the share this is good part of databricks already that you can share this and there is this privilege also people with access who can access this and so on right that is another thing on the editor itself here you can see this is the output part from here if you click on this icon you can create the custom table download csv download tsv export or download to excel copy results to the clipboard and so on right and if you click this plus icon here you can see there is visualizations filter parameters and all sorts of things you can create good visuals out of it you can do the filtration parameterize these things and so on on the side there is this source display data for example let's say i want to go with emir emir i can just type emir here and now you can see it is there in this case i know where i want to go but let's say you know some sort of things that you need to search quickly from the output this is quite handy way to to search these things right and now here after this there is this filter also here you can filter the things for example let's say because you don't need to write the sql queries again from the top let's say you want to filter just the which is greater than let's say 50 right and then you can do enter and now you can see only the age which is greater than 50 pops up here this is kind of filter that you can already have into the output of the sql editor you can add multiple filters on top of it and now here there is another one open selection details if i click this there is selection details it's not nothing here and this is the if i click this one it opens bigger and now you can just minimize this this is just to cancel it i hope you get the overall idea of the sql editor and what are available in the sql editor itself let's go into the next part next part was this queries right the queries are here which you saved it we saved one of the query here right or maybe i will just say here select i can select age and sex okay because it's autocomplete so it's providing me things here from titanic limit 100 i can just run this it is shown i just want to show you what happens in the queries now we have two different queries running here but this is not saved right and now if i go into the queries here you can see i just have one meaning that whatever query you have written in the sql editor and you have saved that will be appearing here the good part this is you can just click this one now it will take back to you into the sql editor and then you can run the things here so this is the age sex and so on based on the um, sql query this is the good time to show you because we were in the same sql editor uh, i was thinking to explain you uh, differently but now you can if you if you notice something we saved select all from titanic limit 100 but we change to this one we didn't save it but when we go into the queries it was the latest one if you modify that it is automatically updated under the hood you also be careful i can just say here select all from titanic and limit in for now let me run this it says here titan okay spelling mistake limit 10 this is what it will be appearing in the queries now if i go to queries here it is the new one so let's say that i want to go to the new here uh, new editor or new query and open existing query this is the thing i forget to mention you before but now let's create a new query and now again i will go to the workspace to the titanic 
and maybe now I will or maybe let's go to the different one why not right there is already the samples being provided here let me go to the new work taxi into the trips there are different columns here I can just go here and maybe preview in the new tab this is open for the new work taxi I want to save this I will save this one I will say okay new work taxi save and now if I go into the queries you can see now there are two queries which is showing for this new work taxi trips and again if I go to this titanic one then the latest titanic is shown I hope you get the uh, understanding of saving the queries for the future purposes right so there is this is the queries I don't have any more details here but you can see there are all the queries there is the favorites which you might do for example let's say that you have your queries here you can just do the favorites and if you go to the favorites it is just shown here it's because you might be running hundreds of queries and you want to run five six frequently you can just do the star or the favorite and it will be appearing there it's simple but it's there right and you can also see if you have the tags are created by and so on then in the queries you can already do from here also or open the editor which opens the sql editor or you can just to create query it goes back into the sql editor that's the same thing right it goes back and forth into the sql editor and the queries that is the second part now let's go into the last one about this query history the query history whatever query you have written it can be in the notebook it can be in the SQL editor or where right all of those will be appearing here as the query history you can see here I have written these things in my last video which is select all display D of Titanic right this was in my previous video now from here you can see all sorts of things here you can see there is this display this one bytes read and total time wall clock durations and where is the query source being shown here and the rows returned how many and all sorts of thing are being seen here and you can see the query profile from here it is shown on the left side here time is spent memory peak and the rows and so on all sorts of things are being shown here this is a place to see your last query whatever you want to see the summary of the last query if you go here this is the details if you go here there is the stop operators aggregated operators column row scan the table and the limit so you can see how much time it is taking and then here the last one is the query text what is the text that we use for that particular query is display df titanic this is handy to go into the details of the query that you have written for example let's go with the last one we just say here create all from this one this is how it is being shown here again but in the in the top menu you can see query history and you can choose from here who has run that query it's just me here so it is shown all for me you want to see from the past how many days you want to even go and see the queries right serverless starter or serverless compute for the notebooks if i just want to go into this compute you can see these are the queries which was run in the notebook meaning that the serverless compute only right from this you can already filter out all sorts of things here is the duration how much time it is taking status is it in queue it is in running it's finished cancels failed whatever it is to quickly go and see the queries and here is the statement what statement do you want to see let me just go into the is there something ready to create no there is one okay we created the table titan again is there delete no we haven't deleted anything so if you go still down there is set do we have something set no select yes i think we have many because we have selected things this way you can go here and quickly do the filtration here is the statement id and you can reset the filters there was the filter that you have set at the last let's say you don't want then you can just reset the filters but yeah here on the top i just want to show all the things import query profile you can just import that into the json you can refresh this and one minute five minute ten minute two hours and so on you can just refresh this one and it is it is refreshed there are many things you can do some might be needed some might not be but it's there for you to explore 
yeah these are the things which is there i just want to show you that these are the things which is possible in the sql editor queries and the query history i hope you learned something new now related to the sql part in the databricks thank you for watching and see you in the next video